thank you so much for joining us on a gorgeous Sunday afternoon in the Washington Catholic Athletic Conference. Commissioner Steve Valentoni has labeled today the championship jamboree of the fall season. I'm Ken Marangolo, and on behalf of First Amendment Sports, I'd like to thank you guys for joining us on this championship Sunday. Let me bring in a, a very special guest. Jenna Reese is helping me call field hockey today. We, this is our first time meeting. You're not going to believe that by the time this, this game cast is over. <laughs> Thanks for hang, hanging out with us today. Okay. Here, let me put the, get the mic up there. There Oops, you go. Sorry. Okay. Someone who's bringing a little credibility to our broadcast who actually knows this game in a way that, that I certainly don't. Uh, first of all, could you ask for a better day to have a final? No, it's a beautiful day. It's the best, right? Good counsel, St. John's live from Catholic University. St. John's has the possession. These two teams faced each other last year in the championship. Uh, I didn't don't think it went St. John's way that day. No. No. Uh, it was a tight game, though. It was? Double overtime. Double, and St. John's is going to be uh, active. S both St. John's and Good Council are going to be active today on First Amendment Sports Championship Sunday. Right now, girls' programs, St. John's and Good Council, let you guys digest some of this action. I'm going to rely on Jenna to keep us straight here and kind of understand what we're watching and why. What do we got here? Is that a... It's a free hit for Good Council. It's I'm just always amazed, Jenna, when we come when we show up to broadcast games, both boys and girls, no matter the sport, I'm always excited because I don't think that there's many high school programs that that, that compete at this at this, you know, talent level. And obviously right. we're at a championship game. But whenever we show up, it's you see basically you're seeing uh, an example of the sport that you probably aren't otherwise gonna be able to see. Right. But these are two very athletic teams. These girls are big and fast. <laughs> Do they play year round? Is, uh, is field hockey getting to be year round just quite yet, or is it mostly no, seasonal still? I would say about half of these girls are year round players, and the other half, uh, maybe 80% of them, play two sports. Oh, look at that. Breakaway. Shot just wide. We're going to be able to deliver some names and numbers here to you here momentarily as we're getting set up here for the first of four championships. We'll be here for boys and girls soccer and girls volleyball. And we very much appreciate not just these schools, but the WCAC for having us. And uh, we certainly appreciate these coaches and these programs, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, Jenna, uh, the, first of all, the uh, the Good Council program has, the, you know, probably a little bit of a cr of a unknown jewel uh, I I as far as field hockey is concerned. Th these guys have been doing it at a high level for a while. Well, Kelly Messino, their head coach, um, plays for Springbrook High School, which is back in their time, in Kelly's time, they were state championship program. Okay. Um, she played for our locally famous coach, Tierney Francis, um, who I know she has a very strong relationship with still. So, And then Corey at, at St. John's, he played for St. Stephen's. And okay. Corey played um, lacrosse for Notre Dame, and I think Corey has won three – Championships at St. John's. Well, St. John's is kind of the title town uh, in, in, on, on a lot of levels these days. Um, and I know we have a lot of friends who go to both St. John's and Good Council. See if the Good Council can't get some offense here. Um, good Council takes a lot of pride in uh, on championship days, and so I, I know they'll they'll they, they'll ho hoist banners to the best of their abilities. Uh, good Council looking to repeat as field hockey champions. Um, so let me ask you this. What we're watching right now, uh, do these programs play vastly different schemes? Are, are, are they attacking each other in a different way? Or basically are, are all of these girls at a level to where um, it's going to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups that people are going to have to win? Um, no, they're probably trying to get a strong passing game, both of them, where it's you know 3v2 breaking the field down, 4v3. Alex Shallow on the... Would you call that a, a, a just a set play? Is it, is it a, these are all penalties? These are penalties. So anytime it hits somebody's foot or you have a stick foul or obstruction, it's a penalty. Okay. We want to educate our viewers. We want people to come back and watch field hockey on First Amendment Sports for years and years to come. That was cool. So she just drew a penalty corner. It's the first corner. Okay. Let's see if we can't get a number. It looked like Leah Morrison, but I can't, I can't tell. Yeah, that's Leah Morrison. The forward for, for St. John's. Got a lot of girls on the goal there. Oh, 
Good skill. Oh, the cross uh, again. I think uh, that wasn't Le Leah put it in. So who's allowed? To, uh, obviously, St. John's has to be the first one to touch it so on, on the cross in. So the penalty corner, they'll be somebody sending it out to the top of the circle, okay. and it has to come out of the circle, and then you can do whatever you want at that point. You can take okay. it directly. You can pass it. You can do step plays. Sort of. That's where coaches, if they're going to be sneaky and fancy, that's where sure. they do it. Good possession here. The cross in the middle. Ah! Good counsel looking to clear. Unable. Is there, is there offsides? No, no offsides. Okay. In field hockey, there used to be. The U.S. Um, field hockey changed that rule to make it a more fan friendly, higher sure. scoring game. Less stops in play. Less stops in play, although there was a lot of stoppage in field hockey. <laughs> you, know, you know, everyone says that in some, like the girls across and girls field hockey, that you're going to see a lot of stops in play. Um, and I, I, when we watch these these guys, I mean, there are some, but we're basically seeing, you know, the, the ball stay in play. I guess they just keep, you know, they're playing such a clean, high, you know, high level version. A little steal by good counsel. Alex Shallow playing a little defense. Draws the call. So these are all intentional draws when they, you know, purposefully hit it to somebody's feet. Okay. So the fouls aren't necessarily, unlike soccer, you, ca you can't draw as many fouls as you can in field hockey. So it's, it's actually part of the game. So when you're they, trying to, you're to trying to draw the fouls, right? Try. We'll, we'll get you what you can set up here on the sound. Thank you, Luke. Alex Shallow brings the ball in. It's pretty hot. Okay, hot mics. What do we got here? Alex didn't put it back in. How can, now? What's the rule on how high you can raise your stick? Uh, in a stop play, you can raise it as high as you want. Okay. In transition and motion, you cannot lift it above you know, your hip or where the ref sees it as safe. Okay. I can only imagine some of the injuries in the sport. I mean, there's no pads out there. I, mean, shin, I guess there's some shin guards. It, it's pretty much like any sport, but sometimes with the ball, yeah, um, it, it can be more dangerous. But for the most part, it's it's like any sport. It's a lot of field to work with. You these breakaways. We're used to watching the similarities between uh, hockey and 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 lacrosse and field hockey, but in this one, if if someone <laughs> gets a breakaway and run, so uh, Jenna, what is your uh, background for uh, field hockey? T let's talk t talk about some of the uh, places you've been for, uh, for as a coach. Uh, so I coached at Quince Orchard High School mm -hmm. for several years. Yep. Um, Quince Orchard actually just advanced to the state semifinals a couple days ago. Yeah, um, and it's coached by a former player of mine that played at Quince Orchard. Okay. Her name is Alicia Vincenti. Uh, she's a state championship uh, player, and then she played for Towson. Okay. So, um, and then I was um, the field hockey and lacrosse coach at Holy Cross in Kensington. Excellent. Yeah, right down the street from me. Who's a WCC yeah. program. Yeah. Just over 20 minutes to go here in the first half. Now, Jenna, clockwise, it looks like it's a running clock even when the ball's out of bounds. When, do they when, when does the clock stop? This, the clock would stop for injuries. Okay. It would stop for um, timeouts, obviously, and it would stop for the last two minutes of the game. The clock will stop. On, on every dead ball? On, on, no, no, not like in play. But okay. If, but if it were to go well out of bounds or, you know, there's any sort of debate about anything, it would stop. Okay. And that's all at the ref's discretion? It's at the ref's discretion. They will keep the clock officially for the last two minutes. 
it's funny we say that because we did football yesterday. St. John's, uh, big big victory over DeMatha at St. John's yesterday. There was a couple referee discretion uh, game clock decisions that I know uh, gave people some heartburn. These guys have a lot of power in stripes, even though they're not wearing stripes uh, on the field hockey field. But I guess that ultimately, as long as they're keeping it safe for the kids, like that's the main thing, right? The re- yeah, the refs are... are um doing a pretty good job. It's nice when they let everyone play. <laughs> Not just right. for the players, but also for the fans. Right. Gracie Smith was able to put it back in there. Some of these uh, players uh, I recognize from um, the lacrosse side as well. Is there a lot of uh, crossover between the uh, in the athletes between field hockey and lacrosse? There's a lot of crossover. Um, and, it, and I guess from a seasonal perspective, you can do both. Right. Uh, the technical skills transfer a little bit, um, and there's obviously a lot to learn from playing a second oh, sport. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, that's one, Jenna, we talk about all, that all the time, the multi-sport athletes um, that are more and more becoming less and less of a thing, uh, which is so sad. Uh, and in the girls' sports, uh, with, with, as we've been able to cover more and come out to situations like this, um, we get to see that... Uh, the multi-sport athlete is alive and well uh, on the girls' side, and we—I w- wish it was more. I wish it was doing a better. They were doing a better job on the boys' side. I know when we when we were growing up, we played everything. Right. Well, we work hard to try to accommodate those needs for our, our you know, our local athletes and club programs. Um, it is. It, I I think actually it's a little bit on the trend back to playing multiple sports. I think that the community and families understand that collegiately. Most uh, athletes that are playing in college actually played two to three sports in high school. Yeah. So the college coaches are living there. Um, Breakaway for St. John's. The, I think that was what Ashley Morrison that got behind there. That, uh, Leah Morrison. Now, how heavy is that ball? It's it's made of fiberglass. Okay. Um, it, it has a different sound. It's obviously not not a lacrosse ball type. No, substance. it doesn't bounce like rubbery like a lacrosse ball. Are they, it's not particularly heavy, um, but it's you know meant to. Nice play, know. Leah Morrison on the drive. I believe I've said Gracie Smith's name before on the lacrosse side for uh, for good counsel, although I could I could be mistaken. And St. John's is trying. They're trying to draw penalty corner right now. Okay. Well, and then she, and then the defender is, is trying to keep it away from her feet. Yes, that's awesome. Lily, Lily, and Kisser had a chance there. And Lily and Kisser are able to make the stop. That that that's a that's a skill. I mean, you're anytime you got a ball that small. Now, so how and on the on the. Defend like that wouldn't be considered a high stick. I guess no one was around her. No one's around her, right? Okay. We we sincerely hope that there's a lot of first time field hockey watchers and and, uh, and listeners today right. um, to be to get get this education. I, I, we we were just thankful that we we're, were invited to be here uh, and and brought, uh, broadcast it so that parents who aren't able to be here and friends of these players who aren't able to be here can, can see their friends play in their school. Good counsel's got a chance. St. John's. Circles the wagons, bottles up, and and the ball stays in play the whole time. That's great. Gracie Smith working the baseline, deliberate clear out there yep. to the out of bounds. Okay, looked like she was doing that on purpose. And shout out certainly to all my friends, Loyola and uh, the Kensington and HR crowd. I know they have a lot of girls who are interested in field hockey and are starting to play field hockey. There's some awesome youth programs, you know, in the Montgomery County area that are, I'm starting to hear about. And I got two young daughters. My oh. wife played um, club over at, at Loyola, and she grew up playing field hockey. So um, I just I'm appreciative that the, that the uh, WCAC provides you know opportunities like this. There's a nice little breakaway two two man game. Stella Shea pushing it up. Ash- Leah Morrison leading the charge. Lillian Kistner turns it over. Mm-hmm. Julia West get, getting the ball out there. So pretty much if someone goes down, they want to stop that play, right? Yes. Safety. Safety. But he was actually calling a foul prior to her falling. Okay. 
I cannot remember this referee's name, but he's a level four certified ref nationally. And is that by because of the pink shirt? No, but it's just <laughs> the, I just know him. It's the highest certification you can have. So he's, uh, you know, the WCC so he knows what he's doing. done a good job yeah. bringing in top officials. Look at you, a coach. Giving some praise to the rest. Might be the, how many times in your life have you done that? Well, I'm not standing on that sideline, <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> we don't hear a lot. We, 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 we do leave the refs alone, but we're always happy to give them a dap when, when, when we can. But so many of us either coached or played before, it's, it's, a, it's a foreign feeling. Right. So, Jenna, we're about uh, 15 minutes away from the end of the half. Uh, how... Look, it looks like St. John's has, has maintained possession a decent amount of the time. I, I would probably say more than fifty percent. Um, what is good is what is good counsel? I mean, how what do they got to do here? Uh, it, looks, it looks like they're not really able to get anything going up the middle. Right. It it, it seems like uh, they're getting opportunities, but not stringing together. You know, any passing with multiple passes in a row, but. They're definitely getting opportunities. Okay. They're playing great defense. They just got to get their offense moving. Julia West tracks it down. Able to hold off Molly O'Connor from St. John's. Oh. Are they wearing mouthpieces? Yes. All right. Thank yes. goodness. Definitely wearing mouthpieces. Leah Morrison on the breakaway. Yep. Good counsel able to shut him down. So that's that's good defense. Yeah. It's, it's good, solid defense. You just got to get these passing, the possession games strung together on attack. Now, with no offsides, you can, I, it sounds like you can get pretty aggressive with how far up you want to play and how far back you want to leave your last last player. Yes. But so far, neither team has been willing to, 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 to do that. St. Well, John's, they're both keeping players back. Both teams are playing, it looks like an off ball. Diagonal defense, so it doesn't really benefit to have a cherry picker on attack. Kaitlin Gallagher forces St. John's to, to knock it out there. Off ball diagonal. Now, now we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> now we are talking field hockey. See that that's skill. Yeah, Lillian she, Kistner. She's, she's very skilled. Of course, I, we, if we had these windows open, we'd hear the parents, who, who, by the way, know way more about field hockey than me as well, as they give the referee a hard time, which I, is kind of what, what parents are supposed to do, right? I mean, to, to a certain extent. I think most parents would say that they don't know that much about field hockey. Okay. <laughs> Their whistles drive them crazy. I can tell you right now, I'm going to hear for the next two or three weeks from anyone who, who listens, they're going to be like, what are you doing? I'm like, listen, Jenna was there to keep me straight. Julia West is going to bring this in for good counsel. St. John's. Speed. Ooh. Leah Moore. Oh. Unable to corral it. St. John's has a chance. They can get it across. Instead, it crosses the baseline. These goalies look like they're warm. Make, make sure that, that I was, the way that they wind up for some of these shots, I can't, can't even believe. We haven't seen anything, you know, worse. I think the one girl caught one in the face, but man, that, that looks, on a cold day like this. Right. They're chilly with a little bit of wind. The goalies look very poised so far. So uh, on some of the set plays before we saw girls in the goal, what's the rule on, on so players? So that's just on a penalty corner, which okay. I think there's only been one so far. That's right. But the uh, it, it's comparable to a corner kick in soccer, but in field hockey... Only five people can stay back. Okay. And the rest actually have to go to the 50. And that's not the only time a player's allowed in the goal? Or they're can, allowed, is it like soccer no, where you can kind of in if they block like, the line? Block okay, the line, sure. yep. But, it, you know, that dates back to the size of the goal and all of the original, you know. Sure. Origins, I guess, of field hockey. Quick start stop, Liam Morrison. She's been active. And I assume... Um, you know, the, at, at this level, they're, they're going to be rotating players in and out. There's going to be a, a good amount of uh, subbing at some point here. I think probably not. No, okay. No, um, these girls are fit enough to play. Uh, you know, the whole game, and they'll sub as needed. I think for 
maybe mismatches defensively sure. or to try to get a fresh look from Sudbury. I don't think there's been any subbing so far. No, I was, I, 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 uh, that's one of the things I was, I was waiting for it. And no subbing on the fly. It's got to be a dead ball. No, it's a subbing on the fly. All actually. right. Yes. See, that's what I'm talking about. Subbing on the fly. Right. So I, I thought maybe I would have missed it. Gracie Smith working. Now, she, and she is uh, a junior, I think. Uh, class of 2021. Oh, they'll call that. Incidental. What? Claire Comstock's able to get it up. Leah Morrison causing trouble. So she just threw a penalty corner there. She's been a handful so far mm -hmm. for the good council defense. All right, so that is that a penalty corner? Right, so she just okay. sort of stuck her stick in there and tipped it into the good council foot on purpose. Which is the smartest play there because she was double teamed. Yeah. Yeah. Chance for St. John's to score the first goal of the day. The drum roll from the student section. Ooh. Good counsel. Blocks it, but we're going to get a replay, right? We're going to get, get, a, get an, right. another one of these. Right. So, okay, so what, what's the goal here? You're trying to, obviously, you want to find one of your guys, collapse around, and get, you know, get a, a secondary pass off super fast so that you can catch the goalie, you know, on a, with a good look in the wrong way. Well, they're just trying to get, you know, numbers up, serious shot off. Okay. Um, most of the coaches will read the defense and then change their quarters, you know, accordingly based okay. on the type of how fast the flyer is or whatever. But you, so, I mean, you don't want, I mean, ideally you can get a nice smooth release from the corner. Don't want to be bouncing. So the player has to spend less right. energy corralling it. Statistically, a good, hard, direct shot is your best bet. Um, but, you know, as they start to learn what the defense is doing back there, they'll make adjustments. Players and coach. Oh. Ellie Shea. With, Ellie Shea puts it in. It looks like it bounces around. Are they going to give that to Alex Howe, or are they going to give it to some, or, or who, who is that? I, I honestly didn't see the number. It might have been Ashley Viglione. It's this person carrying the ball right now, so. Oh, the per so that, is that a thing? You, That's a you thing, score, yeah. you bring it back. You bring it back, great. <laughs> right. All right, we'll get a shot here in a second. Number 14. That was Ellie Shea. And we'll have a stop in the action with nine minutes and 24 seconds to go in the first half. St. John's does score first. So, so then, then let me ask you the, the obvious question, uh, Jenna. Score, you score first, obviously, in any sport. It's a big advantage. Uh, what is your expectation for total goals scored in a game like this? Uh, I would say two, you know, three total. Really? Maybe, yes. Okay. I mean, I, I've seen some. I've, obviously, I've seen some lopsided numbers when I was looking last night at, at you know. Some, but you know, you never know the strength of the programs involved. Um, so, schools like this get together. You're looking for a two-one, three-two kind of game. Correct. Okay. So then, <laughs> then it is even bigger to get on the board first. Right, and then of course the next, you know, two minutes matter. Right, controlling yep. momentum or taking advantage of people celebrating. Shout out to Casey Phelps, the goalie for Good Counsel, and Sydney Antonucci, the goalie for St. John's. I just learned that their jobs are, are even more, I mean, even more important. You know, you're, you're not looking. So, what, what's the uh, what's the most goals scored by a player in any game? You know, when you look look back over some of the, the, the big time performances, you're talking about three, four goals from a player's a big deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. A hat trick would be a huge deal. Okay. Um, so Ellie Shea, we'll keep our eye on her. Caitlin Gallagher will get this started for good counsel. St. John's pressing. Ooh. Leah Morrison causing trouble again. Possessing it well. And a great cross. I, you know what? That was a, a great pass. Good counsel got away with it there. It's amazing, amazing hand eye. The diving cross from That's, Leah Morrison. Yeah, that was very nice. It was a first stick cross. 
How many of these girls play golf? I feel like the that would be a nice transition over. It's mechanically a little bit different. Sure, that, sure, but I'm I'm, I'm sure they're better than me. <laughs> Just on those on those free 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 shots there. So do you expect St. John's to, to, to take on a, a more of a defensive posture, you know, being up one in the championship? I doubt it. Okay. I think... Um, Lee Morrison's coach. open on the left. Ooh. That's a goal. Wow. Great shot. That's Lillian Kistner, number three, I believe. And that was just her working, a pat, you know, one, one side of the, of the defense, uh, defender get, getting to the other side and putting a shot to the, uh, le uh, to the goalies. I want to say, no, that is, that is the uh, stick hand. I think that's cool. If you score, you bring the ball back. <laughs> Come on. I man. think originally it was done for statistical reasons. So you could tell so who it, it was? You, yeah. yeah, sure. <laughs> Jessica Moore, captain, gets things started for, the, for good counsel here. We've got about six and a half minutes to go in the first half. St. John's up 2 nothing. In control. Molly O'Connor commits the foul. Julia Wessel put it back in play. So can you dribble? You can dribble off that. You don't have to just knock it on the uh, on the on the set. It's, it's called a self start. a self start. Okay. And it's it, you know it's by design to keep the game moving faster and players who are skilled at it can you know truly change the game, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's the old old. School uh, street ball, basketball start. Pass to yourself. Ellie Shea commits the foul there. Alex Howe trying to get it out. Oh, there's Good Counsel's first corner. First chance of the day for Good Counsel to put one of these in. And so you get, and you, so St. John's can only have five players, including the goalie. Including the goalie. All right. And they will all start from the goal. Madeline Rudolph will put it into play for the Falcons. And good counsel puts it in on a last minute redirect. I want to say that was Cheryl Krismanich, the captain. Let's see who has the ball. Leading the charge. Two to one. We're at three goals already. There you go. We're three <laughs> goals. And I think we are confirming Cheryl Krismanich, class of 2020, the midfielder, captain of the team, riding the ship for the Falcons. Coming up on four minutes to go in the first half. St. John's two to two. Good Council one. WCAC finals. I wouldn't say. I mean, it's not cold, Jenna, but it's it's chilly. It's a little chilly. It's not bad. At least yesterday, you know, the, you know, you got guys in pads and helmets, and they got all the. I mean, if it gets windy out there and it's cold, I mean, that wind comes right across that field. I guess that you know. You, you, the, thankfully, the game's been pr people have been pretty much staying in motion the whole time. So, can they? Will they call that a block or a charge? It's an obstruction. So she's impeding her okay. forward progression. Yeah. D is there a charge? Uh, not technically. Okay. Trying to get Gracie Smith going on the right side. like Alex Howe is able to turn it. Can she get past Julia West? She does. Leah Morrison is on the run. 
the council gets back. They got the numbers again on defense. So did, now I couldn't tell if that was that looked like more like she, she ran into the ball than. No, than I think Leah she was trying it. to draw a foul. I'm not actually okay. sure there was one, but it looked like she was trying to hit it into her feet. Alex that's Howell, Gracie Smith battling. So that's the same thing. She okay. intentionally hit it to her feet. That's a nice stop. That, that's amazing. Same thing. Back to her feet. Ellie Shea will put it in play. St. John's maintains possession. Claire Comstock over to Liam Morrison. She has a little stutter, stutter mm -hmm. stop that's been really working. So I guess she's trying to establish position. She is able to get herself in front and, is, and, and draw it. But, but So what, the referee's not, just not buying it? He's not buying it, yeah. She's trying to draw a push, but yeah. uh, he says no. <laughs> I like it, though. You got, you know, you got to... You know, so much about sports is getting being in the right spot. So clearly that she's trying to gain position. And the referee says, I don't think so. Lillian Kisser she's working her way through the defense. She looks pretty skilled. She's very skilled. Oh, they nice able to get it back to her. I mean, she's, yep. she's attacking three people. Lillian Kisser, the senior. Liam Morrison able to post Ooh, up and get a cross in. Another great shot. So he's calling a long hit here, which means it's St. John's ball. Lillian Kister, the self-start, feeds it in. The same call. Okay. Popped out on the goalie. Or, or so it comes out to the top of that second uh, circle? Yep. The 25-yard the line. Yep. Fifty seconds and counting. Lillian Kisser looking to give St. John's one more goal before half. Puts it in. The goalie punches it out. St. John's keeps it in. Ashley Viglione able to get it back in. So he's calling a penalty corner here, and there's 20 seconds left. So. The game will not end until this penalty corner is okay. completed. Okay. And if they draw another corner, even if the clock's expired, they will play that corner. So good counsel as has well. to gain possession to they shut, have to get to it shut out. this off. Right. Okay. And Seven St. John's to go. can like bring everybody up if the clock's expired, so they don't have to worry about defense. She's going to call one again. All right. And the game's over. Yeah, right? so, we're so, the ha so the, we're at halftime from a clock perspective, but it will not end until this referee is happy that the good council can clear it. Lillian Kisser with the shot. And good council able to clear it out. Okay, awesome. So we are we are at, at halftime. WCAC Girls Field Hockey Finals. St. John's up 2-1. to one. On the strength of uh, really some strong upperclassmen play, Lillian Kistner, the uh, senior midfielder, doing a lot of work. We'll have a uh, four-and-a-half-minute break here, and we'll come right back.
Getting underway. 30 minutes on the clock. St. John's up 2-1. to one. Second half, St. John's to start. Claire Comstock on the start for the Cadets. And we're back underway. 2-1 game. St. John's up. In control. Jenna, they, they possess the ball. They pass a lot. They, uh, you know, number three for St. John's, Lillian Kissner, really stood out there. She is with the ball now. Uh, a lot of talent. Um, really able to, to, to possess through a lot of traffic, which um, I'm guessing uh, is, is not as easy as, as people would like to think that it is. No, I mean, body <laughs> positioning is so critical for this game. It's just a lot of work, right, for everyone to stay disciplined. Yeah, stay home. I like that. Stay, stay home, home, stay yeah. home. <laughs> Catherine Dow gets, puts it back in. So, okay, so... So that just hit her foot. So when the first half you were saying that uh, was the off-ball diamond, you think that was kind of what they were going for. Now with the 2-1 lead... See right here, the good counsel's in an off-ball diagonal. And that's a defensive uh, position? Yes. Good pass. Stella Shea unable to, to maintain... See, now that, that's, that's what I'm expecting to happen a lot more often, and it just doesn't. To be able to take that ball, I mean, that was 50 yards. Good counsel now with an offensive possession, and they have a chance. Goalie kicks it out. That's nice. Good counsel trying to keep it back in. You mean that it goes through like that off of yeah, the hit? Yeah, that she yeah. was able to get it all the way from the back of the defense, basically all the way up into their offense. Shirokers managed able to corral it for, for the Falcons. Julie West puts it back into play. That's nice. That's a nice feed into the circle. So would you say that's Catherine Dow putting a shot on, or is she just trying to get it into the middle there for someone to direct to get it, in? it Yeah, she's just trying to keep it in play. Okay. Here comes the clear attempt from St. John's. Lily Adams trying to put it back in for good counsel. Lauren Archer on the D. And she may, she's able to, oh, she's not able to get it past Lily Adams. She was able to draw that foul, though. So St. John's will maintain possession. So generally speaking, you know, good counsel is building off of their defensive tactics, but I think they're struggling a bit to string together precise passes, right? And that's what's giving St. John's a little bit of an edge, that they're stringing together, you know, stick-to-stick -stick passes here. It's increasing their possession, time of possession. Lillian Kistner, dangerous. Ooh, that's definitely Swing dangerous. Miss. Liam Morrison would like to have that back. So that's going to be a reset. That's counsel. a reset for good counsel. And, yep. You know, I, lots of players try to use power, but simple is probably best right there. Keep it in play. Leah's got another chance. She is incredibly fast. And, then, and you're right, not a lot of subs. Claire Comstock. Molly O'Connor from St. John's keeping it, keeping it going for the cadets. That's great. That's a great defensive clear by good counsel. Unable to get it, unable to get it out. So I mean, on, on something like that, I mean, when you're when she, when you're making a swing like that, she's trying to get it as far away as possible. Right. Yeah, I mean, for St. John's has been had them boxed in here for a couple of minutes. It's time to just for a clear for yep. council, just a simple clear. Molly O'Connor once again. 
It'll stay Cadet. This is as far up as I've seen. I mean, any of the the last the last line. I mean, they're they're across midfield. You mean for time of possession? For both time of possession, but and I guess you know, and the defense is able to to, to retreat. But it looked like the Saint John it looked like the Cadets were were creeping up in the back. Whereas you, you could, we can see good counsel is, is happy to make sure that their defenders are they're pretty much staying back no matter what. Right. Self-start. Oh, great shot. That was like a, a nice like four, three or four iron right up the fairway. Right, right. It's just, I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to think like if I, you could, you could take these these girls on the course that they would beat a lot of people and this uh, unlike lacrosse on the back line it's still going to be last touch right not it's first not first to get correct yep it's uh, the out of bounds lines are much more like soccer than lacrosse well they're exactly like they're soccer, exactly right? yeah exactly Right, so that was another foot foul, but it was outside the circle. So St. John's has a self-start here, but they have to move the ball five yards before they can go into the circle. And they were not able to. A lot of green. Good pass. Lauren Gerald, captain. That's a nice move. Able to get it all the way up to Jessica Moore, the other another captain. Alex Howell tried to clear. Good counsel keeps it in. It looks like the refs might have missed a little foul there. Hopefully Jessica Moore's okay. She's got yeah, it looks like she popped the ball up yep. into her face. I actually know Jessica. She's tough. She'll be fine. <laughs> Got a whistle. 22 minutes to go in the game. St. John's up 2-1. to one. Good counsel chasing. Now what, you know, so we get another 10, 5, 10 minutes here. Good counsel down one in, in a game that, you know, you, we mentioned we expect to be somewhat low scoring. Right. What, what changes get made? What, how do well, you get more aggressive? You start pulling some of these, these players from the back and moving them up? or Yeah, and... and Coach Messina will have to start to play for um, corners and corners and corners, right? Yep. To increase their scoring chances and push everybody up. I mean, this is very disciplined. She's got plenty of time to keep this off ball diagonal here and make sure she doesn't give up any goals because that, with this amount of time left, would be, you know, very hard to dig out of. Yep. Liam Morrison, wheel, the freshman for the cadets with the wheels. A successful clear out for, right. uh, for the cadets. It's nice. Good counsel is definitely clamping down. 
defensively. Minimize, minimize errors in that area, and then hopefully they give themselves a chance. Defending champions, they're not, they're not, they're not panicking. Nineteen minutes to go. One goal game. Trying to string passes together, Jenna. The St. John's just continues to be doing a better job of it. I think they're just slightly uh, quicker to release the ball, and it makes it, you know, the person receiving more available. That's a good pass. A little touch. Leah Moore, there, there's, there she is, oh and she's. That's a great looking shot. Ooh. And I think she got caught up in the turf. Yeah, she did. Anyone who's played on this this field turf knows that that's exactly what happens when you get when you get caught up in it. Oh. Good Castle looking for a breakaway. Great defensive that stop. Was a nice defensive stop. Was that Bailey Middleton? I believe it was. The junior defender for the Cadets. Great play. Self start. I like that. It's a good a good crowd for the first game on this championship Sunday, Jenna. A lot of a lot of uh, folks made it out. I guess uh, you know the Redskins weren't uh, necessarily right. the draw that uh, they, they've been in the past. And, hey, who wouldn't, wouldn't rather be here? I know a lot of Redskins fans who would much rather be here. Watch these two fine schools compete for a championship. Leah Morrison. Wow, that's an incredible shot. Great stop by the goalie. Goalie made an incredible save. Casey Phelps, very busy. Leah Morrison, the freshman, very active. Unable to control it there. It's Gracie Smith. Uh, there you go, Jenna. It seems it does seem like they're just holding on to the ball just a second too long. Well, there's a good pass. Gracie Smith unable to get it. Wow. Leah Morrison working, I mean, from all angles, what a shot. That's an incredible shot. Another St. John's Cadets shot. have that yes. player for another three years. That's right. could be a, that's a good sign for the Cadets program. Pretty much getting what she wants when, the, when, when she's able to get the ball in one-on-one -on, -one on that side of the field. That's the most difficult position to play on the left side over there because it's a right-sided, strong-sided stick. So Leah's definitely working those skill sets over there. Oh. Better breakaway. Caitlin Gallagher. It's funny listening to these St. John's parents. They are into it. They are absolutely right. into it. <laughs> I'm I'm got a half an ear to be educated on, on making sure I understand. Good counsel fights hard to maintain possession. Fifteen minutes to go in this game. They're down by one. Still haven't changed changed their uh, their their defensive scheme yet. This is a nice opportunity for good counsel. Madeline Rudolph gets the better Leah Morrison. That hasn't happened very often today. Gracie Smith trying something. So this has been pretty much good counsel's most uh, uh, you know most aggressive uh, or prolonged presence you know on the offensive on the end this offensive half. End, yes. St. John's trying to get it out of there. And, and another awesome play by, uh, I believe that was Cheryl Krismanich, keeping it in. What? 
It's going to go good counsel's way. That's unlucky. She just hit it out of bounds. If she had placed that on goal, they'd be in a scrum. The right senior now. captain, Cheryl Chris Manage. So, Coach Messino, she's going to. I think this is good counsel's timeout, although I could be mistaken. We got 14 minutes and 50 seconds to go. Good counsel. So let's say good. I think that was good counsel's timeout. But trying to get get the girls a little bit of a breather. Is this the time when you start making changes, or are you going to just stay stay with what stay with? No, it? she's both teams will stay with okay. who they've got on the field. I honestly don't know who called it, but you know, on St. John's sidelines, they're going to be saying, "Get this ball out of here. <laughs> just, just go get it. just go get one corner and pickpocket this momentum." And for uh, Kelly, she, she and she's, she's probably trying to get some water, you know, to her yep. girls and get everybody, you know, aware of the clock time and know that they've really got to start executing these passes and keep drawing more corners. And we got a little baby shark. Oh, there's a baby shark. There's a little bit of baby <laughs> shark going on in the in the, in the crowd. <laughs> it, I mean, you can't be in in DC. You can't be doing DC sports these days without hearing baby shark. Shout out to the Washington Nationals for delivering us. An amazing title. Mm -hmm. We live in title town now, Jenna. Right. Nobody in D.C. has slept for a month. Right. Thanks to the Nats, I, right? Thanks to the Nats. I, I, I'm so glad you said that. We've been talking about that. I feel like I haven't had a break. Right. I mean, the games go till one, and it has been an absolute slog. Um, and, and uh, you know, I, I was lucky enough to get down to Houston. I'm like the one Nats oh, fan that got, one of the Nats, few Nats fans that got to watch the Nats win in person. Um, so, uh, it, thank That's goodness. Exciting. It is exciting. I felt so terrible for all, but you know what? All those people in the rain in game seven at the stadium, that's, I, my hat, my hat goes off to them. And here's St. John's doing just what you said, getting that ball out of there. Liam, Liam Morrison working. Mm. This is one Good too stop many, there by Olive Laura. Dribbles. All right, St. John's with a chance. We know who they're trying to get the ball to. Unable to get it over to Leah, though. It, but on the, one more pass. It looks like they're getting a little nervous. Stella Shea. A little nervous trying to get a full clear. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't even need to see her number. You know the smoothness of that That's athlete. That's a nice back pass there. Keep this ball in play. Great shot. Wow. St. John's giving themselves a chance. Good counsel. Looks Sacrificing. That's, take, a, that's probably a fourth incredible clear from good counsel's goalie. That was another very potent shot. Oh, we hope she's okay. It looked like Stella Shea got it on the ankle there. It's like, uh, I mean, I hope she's okay. I'm, they're going to call, call the uh, trainers over. Well, Lillian Kissner was really able to use possession to get it deep. She put the, the and was that Leah Morrison who was able to, to corral it on the other side and put an amazing so, yeah. shot. Her shots are amazing. Is that that's next level? I mean, we haven't. We, I don't think we've seen many, many of those with that besides hers all day. No, she's definitely using that effectively. It's a tricky angle, but it definitely sets the goalie back, makes them have to prepare for that off-ball shot. But it's also an opportunity for Casey Phelps to put on a, a goalie clinic. She's made some right. amazing saves. The clock has stopped. Just over 13 minutes to go in the game. Good counsel is trying to tie it up at two. We're hoping Stella Shea can walk this off. going to sting. Hopefully she's okay. Looks like Amelia Haywood is coming in. 
Should get some direction from the senior midfielder, Ashley Viglione. I would think that would be St. John's ball. I felt like that was a lifted hit into her knee, but the council's clearing it. I think there's some parents in front of us in the stands that agree with you. <laughs> I think that Coach Kelly said that to the ref as she was walking off as well. <laughs> wow. Good council with the chance. St. John's back on defense. Huge numbers. We're paying attention to that now. 13 minutes to go in this game. A good pass up to Catherine Dow. Julie West puts it in, but St. John's is, is owning the middle on defense. So what was that? He's calling, it was a little bit of a ricochet, but he's calling St. John's for a lifted ball. Okay. Which is a pretty... Mm, Gracie 50 -50. Smith working hard, trying it. I'm surprised it it's in. not a corner in there. And here comes Leah Morrison, but she is not going to beat Madeline Rudolph to the ball. Madeline gets it to Gracie Smith. And here comes number 12, the freshman, the cadet. Wow. Good defensive stop there by Cheryl Chris Manich. Who has the only goal for good counsel today. St. John's takes over. Mm, that's a nice stop by good counsel. Chris Manich has been active at the midfield today. Captain. Wow. Wide open here. Oh, my God, that's... And, and two to nothing. I mean, two to two. Sorry. Yeah, no, no what, two unanswered. Yep. Uh, good counsel back in this game. Not just back in it. This game is evened up. 11-22 to go. What was last year? Double overtime, Jenna? It was double overtime. She was unmarked, but that forward for good counsel. Great, but because... She brought the ball away, all the way up. I'm going to credit the goal to Gracie Smith, who, who was working hard the entire time. I mean, she, she had the initial shot that was blocked. There was a couple St. John's defenders in there, Gracie Smith. Well, she also um, had that power hit through, which is what you've been commenting on. Yep. That's how that ball got in there. Amelia Haywood. Oh, that's nice play, playing there. It's a nice quick self-start for St. John's. She's going to draw a corner. Leah Morrison has been trouble for good counsel all day. Ten minutes, just about ten minutes to go in this game. Opportunity for St. John's to retake the lead. It's tied 2-2 right now. It's a little slow, the hit. Coming out. Working the baseline. So they're calling a, a long hit for St. John's. St. John's will maintain, maintain possession. possession. Good news. I'm looking across the field. I can see Stella Shea running it off, walking it off. They're working on her, but she seems she seems to be okay. Mr. Miss Shea, if you're out there. Lillian Kistner putting on a clinic. Stick work. Ashley Viglio looking to keep it in. Working the baseline, good counsel takes possession. That's a tight call. He's calling her for a stick foul, but it's that's a, a little bit, a little bit tight for this level. Claire Comstock has been. I mean, is there a name for that when they make the when someone tries to clear, they make that awesome stop with amazing hand-eye coordination? <laughs> I think it's an awesome stop. Just an awesome stop, <laughs> right. like in the in the stat box. Her awesome <laughs> right. stops. Claire Comstock is 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 uh, leading the league.
Good counsel. Putting the pressure. That's a good clean defensive play. Good counsel looks like they want to foul, but that's a solid defensive play there. Bailey Milton getting the better of Jessica Moore on that one. And here comes Gracie Smith. Great pass to Julia West, I believe. She's going to get it up herself. And, look, and we have uh, possession at the top here. This is Lauren Gerald, the, the captain nice, attacker. Nice second and third effort there on the clear. Opportunity for good counsel now. Now, how many different plays are you are you 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 coaching to call in, or is it pretty yeah. much? They really the coaches are really only calling in plays for corners. Okay. The rest of it will be sort of you know the way they run their attack. Okay. In general. It's a long run for Gracie Smith to retrieve this ball. We'll have to increase our budget. Right, they need some ball of, girls. A couple extra, you know, folks on the side. Exactly. Or ball boys. Or Jenna, ball I mean, boys. Come on, it's all, you know, I'm just saying. Good counsel able to stay. Jessica Moore unable to keep it. Oh, he's calling over a stick foul. That's the right call. It's um, it's the right call. Just un unlucky. Another half an inch, and she'd be on a breakaway. We haven't seen too much of that today. Uh, certainly not good. Good counsel hasn't had too many breakaways. Leah Morrison for St. John's has been able to get free and 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 do some running. But look, this is here. St. John's just doing a really good job of. Station to station. I'll tell you what, you're going to have to outwork Cheryl Chris Manich in the midfield if, you, if, if St. John's is going to have to, have to, if they see number 15 coming, they're going to have to step it up. She has been yeah, absolutely, very solid. absolutely active in there. Well, it, that was a little bit of a foul, but refs missed it. Now, are they going to hold the whistle and see what happens for advantage in any, in any situation, or are they going to generally they just They should always it? hold the whistle okay. for advantage, right? Um, and they actually have been doing a, a good job of that. Okay. The council gets it out to the wing, but only white jerseys there. Stella Shea back in. Unless they have more number fours. Mm. That's unlucky for a good counsel. St. John's just had a quick free hit, but it was a turnover. And the ref is whistling the ball back to a, to a different spot on the field to start the play. It just seems unfair. Yeah. Although, <laughs> although Lillian Kistner, a rare giveaway. But letting her just start for free with space just <laughs> seems a little unfair. She's been she's been dominating. Leah Morrison showing some moves. Lauren Gerald able to get it up to uh, Kaylin Gallagher. Back to Lauren Gerald. That's a nice big hit. Everyone's. Oh, I'm. Did you think that was going to go the other way? I, yeah, I did not. I actually didn't see a foul either way. Okay. I'm not sure what that was. What a class four. No, that was Sorry. the other round. <laughs> oh, that was him. Okay, I was going to say. Right. Okay. This is dangerous timing for both teams. Under five to go. Lillian Kister instead of putting it. Uh, okay, there we go. I heard that whistle. Yep, that's a foot foul. What are the rules of overtime as we near that 
So it's a 77 sudden death. Okay. We'll take four players off the field for each team. What? Right. Yep. That's pretty cool. Um, and you're allowed to sub during overtime. Anybody can play. Same thing for second overtime. Sudden death, and then the then they'll go to one-on-ones. Oh, wow. Well, just so you know, Jenna, whenever we show up for championships, something awesome it just seems to happen. Not because of anything we do, mind you. Uh, because the best players, uh, the best high school sports players in, in the area are playing in this league. We're biased, obviously, right. but we think so. And on this very field, the last time I uh, broadcast a game on this very field, it was uh, the WCAC football championship. Okay. Uh, where? Yep, I was at that game. Oh, kind of an amazing right. finish. <laughs> right. So, I, I, you know, I, I have high hopes, very high hopes. It's, uh, it's definitely um, nice to have back-to-back, I think, overtimes with championship games when it's a rematch. Oh, without a doubt. It was an awesome stop by Gracie Smith. That's a great, right, that's a great. And then here comes St. John's back. Leah Morrison controls the ball. Wow, she's And in. she's. Oh, now that is not holding the whistle for advantage. That is well, I know when they gave definitely it, unfair. I, I couldn't believe that. She reacted well, though, very mature. She kept playing quickly. But then, unfortunately, she gave him, hit it out of bounds. I think she might have given him a little bit of a hairy eyeball. She was in <laughs> front of the defense, all, you know, and she had an open that's, player, yeah, too. That's, that's not good. That is the level four. <laughs> there you go. All right, time out on the field with two and a half minutes to go. This game is knotted up at two. Rematch of last year's WCAC Field Hockey Championship, St. John's. Good counsel. St. John's. Kind of was. In, I felt like they were in control of this game for, for the most part in their first half, and it wasn't really until uh, Good Counsel scored that first goal that maybe they kind of, or the second right. goal. I'm sorry that they, that uh, now I'm starting to look out and I'm starting to see 100 percent even. Right. It, it, totally different styles of attack, but it seems like they're obviously both very effective. Well, maybe like St. John's was on offense for such a long period of time, and Leah Morrison's been running constantly. Maybe good. Maybe the good counsel is it's taking advantage of. Maybe you get Gracie Smith and Jessica Moore. Maybe they're they're just, just just ready. Gracie the junior. I think Jessica Moore the senior. We got we got some stomping fans out here. Is this like a? I can't, I can't tell if St. John's brought their own music, or if this is coming from the stadium. This is coming from the stadium. I was I was waiting for you to say this is a traditional field hockey championship song, <laughs> the stomping. I mean, I know Baby Shark. I, I kind of thought Baby Shark was probably not like a a field hockey staple. Okay, two and a half minutes. This is it. This is it. St. John's wants wants to keep it down here, right? Uh, yeah. Probably only maybe. have another couple really good chances coming. Oh. Lillian Kissner dissecting right the defense. It's white ball out of bounds. Yeah, I was I would have called that. I pushed the buzzer. Oh, boy. Leah Morrison unable to control, but she's still there. It's still another, yeah, she sort of got tripped up a little bit with her feet there. No, no, uh, you, you kick it all you want on offense? No. <laughs> <laughs> no ice hockey feet in here. I'm just saying it. Minute and a half. Oh, she pushed through there. That's uh, that's tough. Physical. Okay, one minute. Just over one minute. We're all we are we are tracking There's another long ball by good counsel. To a big finish. So that so good counsel will have an opportunity to quick start. Gracie Smith got it in there. 
Oh, and they've got a corner with under a minute. 55 seconds to go. Good counsel with a huge opportunity. Now they're looking not necessarily, they could maybe take their time on this, get, the, get themselves to a position where they make the attempt and potentially draw another corner. Draw another corner. Mm -hmm. Man, you think I've been calling this game for right. two or three you hours. Sound good. I'm impressed. And these girls here on the 50 are going to hustle back to try to help get this ball really out. There's an awesome stop. And there they are, back to help. That's a foul. He missed it, but that's all right. Lauren Gerald unable to keep <laughs> it down for good counsel. But guess who? Cheryl Krismanich. She's got 13 seconds left in her. So now here, they really just want to send this out of bounds. There's no reason for this ball to be back in the circle, right? There's 10 seconds left. St. John's looking for the clear. Yes. Yeah. Leah Morrison, she's fast, but that's it. We're going to overtime. Rematch, championship rematch, which went to double overtime last year, will be going to at least single overtime this year. I, right. told, I You know, Jenna, I, I should have told you before we started, here at First Amendment Sports, we only do exciting finals. Right. We only do <laughs> exciting championships. I'm looking out over a, a bunch of nervous parents and yeah. you know, in there, look at the look at the division. You got the St. John's side. You got the Good Council side. Good Council's all the way over there in the sun. These St. John's, you know, fans are over here in the shade. <laughs> but there's a solid section in between them because some tells me they remember last year. Right. So this is a little bit of cruel and unusual punishment for Coach Kelly at St. John's because she's okay. nine months pregnant. Oh my gosh! <laughs> How did we not get to there beforehand? I First don't know. of all, I was saving amazing. it for time. <laughs> That's a great nugget. That's a good nugget. Is there like, do we have like, is there a doctor here? Or just <laughs> That's a, right. I mean, for goodness sake. That's right. Where's so, so the coaches now are going to take, you know, their top seven players. Fitness is huge. You can imagine what some of these more skilled center midfielders look like with the fewer people on the field. Well, and the field looked big at times already today. You know, I mean, it's a big field, uh, right. and then you're going to take four off. Eight, eight total girls will be off this field. Correct. Right. I mean, that's that's a lot of, and then, and but you can sub on the fly. You can sub on the fly. Okay. And they, and they will definitely be subbing if this goes beyond five minutes. Um, you know, for fatigue reasons. Yep. Three and a half minutes until we're going to get things started here. So the teams are at the center now, flipping the coin. See who's going to start possession here. Don't do it without. They're okay. We make sure all the the, the all captains the get there on time. There, right. Coach Kelly, shout out to Coach Kelly and her, and her whole family. Congratulations. That's <laughs> amazing. And then you know what? Special thanks to all these parents here. Hopefully. Uh, they can turn this, this sound down on, on anything that I'm talking about and be able to uh, replay this game uh, for their for, for, the, for their families, uh, for their out-of-town folks. You know, Jenna, what the, one of the coolest things is when we come and do these things, you know, I always apologize to, to my, to, to the most, you know, of my ability. Um, we're, we're super happy to bring, bring these games out, but there's so many family members out of town, out of right. state. Grandparents uh, watching. Grandparents watching. Uh, we had a couple people on a, a military base overseas that said they were, they were catching us uh, today throughout the day because they had some family members that were playing, uh, you know, so, some girls and some boys playing today. So shout out to all you guys. Hopefully, uh, Jenna does enough to keep me from ruining ruining the the I occasion think you're doing for you. Doing a great job. You sound good. <laughs> well, I can tell you how much time's left, and I can match a number to a roster. But I rely on you for. I mean, and you know, and I, I did I did come up with the awesome stop stat. If we're being honest, right? It's the new name. Awesome. It's awesome an awesome stop. stop. How many awesome stops? Like, I mean, let's be honest. And I, I'll tell you what. Uh, in, regular, uh, in regulation, me not knowing a whole lot of anything uh, for good counsel, Cheryl Krismanich and Gracie Smith just jumped off the field for yep. me. Um, for St. John's, number three, Lillian Kistner, looks like one of the most skilled players uh, you know, in, you know, on this field, probably in the league. The freshman, um, the, the, uh, Leah Morrison, number 12, she's, she's starting overtime out there. Uh, and she's been uh, everything good counsel can handle. Oh, they're flipping sides here. 
All right. Well, then, you know, they should, that would have been nice for them to tell these goalies. Poor Casey Phelps and Sidney Ant- Antonucci or, or Maggie Finney. Oh, you know, it is Sidney, number 99. That's a long way for them to have to run in all that gear. At least I'm not making the coaches switch sides. You know, Coach Kelly, she can just stay. I wish I would have known. I have a real comfortable, you know, chair she could have sat <laughs> she in. She could never sit down. <laughs> She's not a sitter. No. No. All right, we're set to go here. we got 10 minutes on the clock. 2-2 game. Good counsel to start it. As the referees sink their watches, here we go. Wow. First opportunity for Leah Morrison. She stood up, though, and let that ball sort of slip away. Yep. Now you can, now you can see the size of that field with, with the, the, the fewer players. There's a lot more space to work, to work with. So where, are you... Are you Trying to spread your players out here, or are you trying to really dominate the middle of the field? I mean, I feel like you don't want to give up the middle. I, you're just trying to make smart passes, no turnovers, right? And just okay. get in there. It's a nice defensive stop. Chris Manich, great leading pass. Wow. Lauren Gerald. It's a nice stop. Got the ball back. St. John's able to clear. So it's Ellie Shea. Good counsel is staying with the softball diagonal. It's been working. I mean, it's I. Very effective. I think that ball is going to have enough juice to get out, and it will. Yeah, I mean, why? You got to dance, dance, dance with the person you brought. But, but uh, and, and good counsel really kind of stuck to their guns all the way throughout. Ellie Shea. What? She was trying to bang it out of there like the council's been doing so effectively. Didn't quite work. Here comes another run. Wow. Lauren Gerald working the baseline in. skillfully. <gasps> and she's able and to she sneak scored. it past wow. Sydney Antonucci in single overtime this year. Good counsel. Very quick, two minutes in. Over St. John's. That's that, and you know it's a great way to win. It's a tough way to lose in overtime. Man, I tell you what, it, it was a lot of. I'll, I'll, I want to just Lauren Gerald working on the baseline there. Uh, just a ton of uh, talent be, being able to keep the ball on her stick and keep A, keep the ball in, B, keep the ball away from the defender, and then really b- knock it off the goalie's leg. Right. Uh, clearly something she did on purpose. That, that was, It was a really great shot. Uh, one on nothing with the goalie. Uh, in overtime, there's your senior captain, attacker. You know, you know. Uh, um, she played well all game. Yep. I'll tell you what, on behalf of First Amendment Sports, I want to just say thank you to Jenna for joining us today, making making you know, make, making a little bit more uh, educational <laughs> for, for me, so. but also keeping it fun. Let's see, we got some sportsmanship coming up here uh, as they as they shake hands. We'll go out on that. So I think um, just real quick yep. that um, the ISL championship is just oh, yeah. concluding, and Holton um, Stone Ridge is gonna going to beat Holton three to one in that final game. Oh wow! Okay, They've got one minute left. Okay, so people, so that's fun. That's you're fun. Extra, you're getting extra data. <laughs> Well, we'll be back in a matter of minutes, probably the next 20, 25 minutes. We'll be back with uh, the uh, girls' soccer final. We'll be here for the boys' soccer final. We'll be here for the girls' volleyball final. Your first champion of the day, though, good good counsel, Falcons, 2019 field hockey champions. She's Jenna. I'm Ken. This is First Amendment Sports. We'll see you in a little bit.
Ich habe mich so gut gehabt.